In this section of the syllabus, Propagation Theory, we will consider the nature of radio waves and the way they travel through the atmosphere. This is essential in order to understand why different radio frequencies are selected for particular applications, such as long distance communications or high definition ground radar. We also consider how radio waves are transmitted and received and how information is added to basic radio waves. Let's start by putting radio waves into the context of other waves. Here we see that radio waves form a small part of a wide spectrum of waves, known as electromagnetic radiation, some of which are visible as light. The various types of wave differ in wavelength, frequency and energy. Long waves, generated by an electric output through a radio antenna, have a low frequency whereas ultraviolet radiation waves from the sun have a very high frequency. The frequency of the wave is proportional to the magnitude of the particle's energy. So, very short waves, such as X-ray waves, have a very high frequency and contain an enormous amount of energy. It is this energy that enables them to penetrate and even harm human tissue. Whereas the long wave with a low frequency, requires comparatively little energy for its transmission and is harmless. Waves within the spectrum have similar characteristics, such as the speed at which they travel, namely 162,000 nautical miles or 300 million meters per second. This is known as the speed of light, but in fact, this is the speed of all forms of electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation does not require a material medium and can travel through a vacuum. That is why this form of energy can travel to Earth from the Sun and from outer space. How then are electromagnetic waves created? Where electric charges move, they give rise to a magnetic field, perpendicular to the flow of the current. In the case of direct current, the electrons move continuously in the same direction and the magnetic field also moves in that direction. However, if the motion of the current is changing, as with alternating current, then the magnetic field oscillates and in turn it produces an electric field perpendicular to the magnetic field. This electric field also oscillates where both a magnetic field H and an electric field E exist, the two fields are collectively known as electromagnetic radiation and the frequency of these electromagnetic waves is the same as that of the electric charge which created them. If an alternating current at low frequency is passed through any wire, such as an aerial, also called an antenna, the magnetic field will move one way in a wave and then reverse and collapse with the current. But as frequency increases, the magnetic field will not have collapsed completely before the reversed field starts to establish itself and energy will start to travel outwards from the aerial in the form of electromagnetic waves. The direction in which the electromagnetic waves travel out from the aerial depends upon the orientation of the aerial. If the aerial is vertical, then the electric field E also travels in a vertical waveform. This is called vertical polarization. If the aerial is positioned horizontally, then the electrical field will be horizontally polarized. To receive maximum signal strength from an incoming radio wave, it is essential that the receiving aerial is in the same plane as the polarization of the wave. So a vertically polarized radio wave would require a vertical aerial. The magnetic field H, which is also created by the alternating current, travels at right angles to the electrical wave. But we are not concerned with the magnetic field during further consideration of this topic, as it is only the electrical field that carries the radio message. Circular polarization 
is produced by winding a wire in a helix shape around an insulator. This is called a helical antenna. The helical antenna has the advantage of transmitting in both vertical and horizontal planes, and in all planes in between. So, circular polarization is useful where a transmission in a single plane, for example, the horizontal plane only, may be rotated or twisted in space. This is called Faraday rotation. It occurs as the signal passes through magnetic fields in the ionosphere, which bend the wave and thereby reduce the effectiveness of the transmission. Consequently, circular polarization is most often used in satellite communications such as GPS and mobile phones. Circular polarization also has the advantage that antenna alignment is no longer critical, as the wave transmission is in all planes. When used with radar, circular polarization has the benefit of being able to eliminate unwanted precipitation, clutter, from radar screens. However, the production of helical waves consumes more power than the production of vertical or horizontally polarized waves and so range is less. Consequently, linear polarization is used in good weather and circular polarization is used in rainy weather. This concludes our lesson on electromagnetic waves, from which we have learned how radio waves form a small part of the wide electromagnetic spectrum and how radio waves are generated by the use of alternating current through an aerial. We have also examined how radio waves emanate from an aerial in a vertical, horizontal or circular polarisation.